Hi, hey, it's Sexy J. Today I have a rhetorical analysis of a poem and a sort of a PSA of how to not get your point across because this is that poem, okay? This is a lovely poem. I love this poem, guys, but I'm going to approach it like um, how do I communicate what my contents are, what my intents are to the audience effectively because this poem doesn't do that. It's a great poem, though, but it is great in an artistic way, but not great in terms of being a communicator. So this poem, The Road Not Taken, you guys already have heard of the poem probably. It's Robert Frost. Uh, you guys usually read it in eighth grade. And it is not a difficult poem. You guys can see the language here, right? No difficult words here, really. Maybe diverge, maybe. But 80% of America misinterprets this poem, and that's because of the rhetorical choice that Robert Frost makes here. On purpose, because poetry, but you guys are writing a speech, an essay, you should never do this, okay? So what is the meaning of the poem? Let's look here. The road not taken, that means I'm regretting something. I wish I took that road, okay? And the key here is going to be just right here. These two lines right here. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. That's it, okay? I don't really need anything else from the poem. And you guys can read the poem on your own if you want, but I'll just be focusing on that. If I'm going to be telling people in the future, you're like, <sighs> What is that? I regret something, right? It's like, I should have taken the other road. That's what this poem is about. The road not taken. Why? Because I'm thinking I should have taken the other road. That is the interpretation, guys. That is inarguable. However, 99% of Americans, or anybody in the world, really, who references this poem, use it wrong. Instead of these two lines, what do they focus on? These two lines right here. I took the one let's travel by, and that has made all the difference. That might sound more familiar to you guys if I give you the wrong thing, which is the road less traveled. Okay, that's how people misremember the title of the poem, The Road Less Traveled. They say, in an acceptance speech, right? Like, nobody thought I would make it here, right? Everybody doubted me, they hated me, they said I was too short, too whatever, but I took the road less traveled, I did my own thing, you guys can do it too, all you kids out there, you can do anything, nothing is impossible. You know, those types of speeches, right? In sports, athletics, um, awards shows, actresses, whatever. It's a theme very beloved by Americans. If you take the road fewer people travel on, aka do your own thing, you can do it. You can do anything you want in America. You can achieve your dreams. Is the thing that, honestly, uh, media sells you, right? And that can be a positive thing. That can be a motivating thing. That's great. That's not what this poem is, though. Yeah? Because, what did I say? I'm going to tell this with a sigh. So, the one that the media, the common culture says, like, I'm going to tell people, dude, I took the road less traveled. It worked out great. That's the interpretation people give you. What is it actually? Dude, I took the road less traveled. That was stupid. That's the actual interpretation. So why is there such a drastic difference between the actual interpretation and what people say? What do you guys think? Take a second to look at the poem, pause it, and read it. I didn't need to pause myself, right? But, okay, so it's because you guys have learned this in English class, but this is such a good example of how to communicate your message effectively. The conclusion is obviously the last thing that your reader sees, right? It's usually also the thing that the reader will remember the most, okay? I honestly don't remember Obama's speech, for example, but I do remember he said Obama out and dropped the mic, okay? I mean, that was honestly super cool, but I remember that clearly. I'll probably never forget that. I don't remember what the rest of the speech is about. Sorry, Obama, you're a great speaker, but yeah, it was, this was just too great of an impact. Anyway, look at the construction here. I know both of these things are in the last stanza. The I shall be telling this with a sigh is in the first part of the conclusion. I took the one let's travel by, that has made all the difference. Those are the last two lines, right? That's why that's what everybody remembers. Now, there are other sociocultural factors of that's a very common theme for America, that's a beloved theme that goes into it. But in terms of rhetorical analysis, it's the last two things you read, that's what you remember, okay? You guys probably are also agreeing, I hope, that that's how you read the poem too, or that's how you heard the poem used in media. So what could he have done to fix it? It's a super simple fix. That's why I'm giving you guys an example to make your writing and public speaking all of that better. I shall be telling you to a sigh, summer agent. Just put those two lines last. Flip it, okay? So if I go, I'm going to tell the people, I took the road less traveled by, that made all the difference. And when I do that, I'm going to be crying. Now the message is clear, right? Okay, obviously if I say, I'm going to be crying, that's even stronger than sigh, okay? So then it would be, yeah, okay. So you already know you kind of effed up. And you're going to be yeah, telling people this is my failure story. I get that now. That's all you have to do, right? Very, very easy fix. Now, um, just to make sure you guys are not saying that I am trashing on Robert Frost, I think this is an amazing poem. I think it's almost a piece of like uh, popular culture art in terms of how he misled people on purpose, kind of, because it's a poem, right? This is not an essay, okay? So 
His whole point was like, yeah, we lie to ourselves. We have regrets. Sometimes we lie to ourselves to the point of convincing ourselves, okay? So it's a, the message is deeper. But if this was a real uh, type of advice, again, an essay or a letter or a speech, and I'm trying to tell people, don't do this, then you got to flip it, okay? So very, very simple message, and I'm going to do it myself right now, right? Put your main point at the very end. It has to be there in the conclusion. Your conclusion will be the thing the reader, if they take away anything from your speaking or writing, this could be the conclusion, okay? So stick to that. Otherwise, you're gonna have 99% of America um, is still interpreting uh, what you wrote, so you don't want that, okay? So stick with that, guys. And this is a beginning of a series of rhetorical analyses. And I'm going to be tackling a bunch of different texts, um, virtual speeches, videos, and analyzing how they're done, how they could do it better, or what I could also do for you guys, if you guys have speeches or uh, books that you guys want interpreted, analyzed, whatever it is, I'm your guy, right? My reading is like my main, main, main thing. I don't know many things I'm great at, right? So leave, me, uh, leave it in the comments, whatever you guys want to see, and I'll get right on it. Um, I'm kind of excited to be doing this because this is the stuff that I nerd out the most about. You guys might notice I'm a little bit more excited than when I do SATs. I mean, I like doing that too, but this is like, I was about to curse. This is my stuff. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Study every day with Sexy Day. Y'all already know. Bye-bye.